heaven we come before your throne in the name of the lord jesus christ with the holy spirit thank you for everything that you have given us especially for today's sabbath study and as we study give us the holy spirit and get us and let the prayer request be answered according to your will heal everyone and forgive all our sins and thoughts words and in deeds and Jesus name we pray with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah. Proverbs three seven. Be not wise in thine, in thine own eyes, but fear the Lord and depart from evil. It means that we should not be wise in our own understanding. We should not be wise in our own understanding, but we should depart from evil and fear God. Isaiah chapter 5, 21. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight.
Psalm 62, 2. Psalm 62, 2. He only is my rock and my salvation. He's my defense, and I will not shall be greatly moved. My verse is Psalms 148, verse 1. Praise you, the Lord. Praise you, the Lord, from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. It means that we should, we should praise God in times, in good times and in bad times. The verse found in Psalms 119, verse 2. Blessed are they that keep his testimony and that seek his that seek him with the whole, whole heart. It means that blessed are they that seek God's testimony. My verse is Psalm 64, verse 1. Let God arise, let his, let his enemy be scattered. It means that God will stand firm and his enemy shall be scattered. Okay, so good morning and happy Sabbath to everyone. So today we're going to talk about the most famous celebration that is um, a lot of most of the people were celebrated in this um, December 25th, which we know it's the um, Christmas celebration. Oh yeah, Christmas celebration. And um, which we know it's the Christmas celebration, and most the people know when you when you say it's Christmas in this in this entire world, it's Christmas is everywhere. When you go in this entire world, it's kaning Christmas is everywhere. No, bisag ahaju ka And let's see if um, most people believe that it's the birth of Christ, right? But is it really? Oh, and that will be later tonight, right? Because what day today? Oh, 24 now, so that will be later tonight. So that's why we already discussed about this, but it's good that we keep on, you know, uh, talk about this over and over again because, you know, there's still a lot of people who were misled and, and deceived with these practices and celebration. Well, the people who, who celebrated on this day didn't know that um, behind all this celebration, it's full of... It's full of evil. It's full of blasphemy and mockery in the name of God. From the very, from the very word Christmas. No, it says there already. Um, let's define that word. Christ, which is a Chris, or Christ, which is the Son of God, and the word Mass. From the page 537 of the Catholic Encyclopedia, it says the supreme act of worship consists essentially in an offering of a worthy victim of God, the offering made by a proper person, a priest, the destruction of the victim. So this is the destruction of the victim. And who is the victim? Jesus Christ, right? Because it's Christmas. So when you say it's destruction of the victim, this is the destruction of Jesus Christ. So, and then people, people believe that it's his birth, but it's actually not his birth, but it's his death. So um, this is the time that the structure of Jesus, this is the time that Jesus were, you know, 
um, being murdered and nailed on the cross, and he's suffering. And then people will say, oh, Merry Christmas, and then they will pass that uh, greetings to one another and, and cause everyone to bless him in the name of God. And they didn't even know that they are happy. <laughs> they are happy because Mary is happy, right? Oh, they're happy that they crucified Christ. They are happy that Christ is suffering. They are happy that God is destroyed and, and murdered. Oh, well, I can say how now. It's 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 blasphemy. And you know, most of my friends already maybe your friends as well already know about that some of the truth. But you know, people would say uh well, this is what I'm used to since I was just a little kid. I already, I already celebrate Christmas or it's like um, one of the day or holiday that me and my fa and family will hang out, we'll have a good time. Yeah, but I, they didn't care about the truth. Well, the people who knows the truth are held accountability for the light that they receive. And we as well who knows the truth, no, we are accountable to preach to other people and to spread the, this light as well. Okay, good morning and happy Sabbath to all. And at this time, we will talk about uh, Christmas season. So, uh, Sister I said the meaning about the, uh, Merry Christmas, what was it means. And my part now is all about its origin. Where did it came from? So at first, people might think that Christmas was the birth of Christ. So we will find out in the Bible if it was the birth of Christ or Christ was really born at the winter season. Because December 25th is a winter season. And we will find out in the Bible if Jesus was born on winter season. And people might think that Christmas is a celebration of life or a time to give and uh, give unto others. And in fact, we can give any time, not only on Christmas season. So that's why during September, in the month of beer, September, October, November, and December, people would ask their gift, a Christmas gift. Oh, no, so, so far, wala po kadawat o Christmas gift. Oh, kay dili man tamo celebrate po. But, specifically, or uh, sa atong na hibawan is, we can give any time, not only on Christmas season or on December 25th or on the month of beer. We can give any time to our neighbor. So what actually is uh, December, origin of December 25th? So according to this, this pagan origin, December 25th has its, has its origin called the Latin word, word Natalis Invictus Solis. What was the meaning of Natalis Invictus Solis in the Latin word, which is it's originated December 25th? Natalis Invictus Solis is a derivation called the unconquered sun, or it was the undefeated sun. S-U-N. So, why did they call this December 25th the unconquered sun? Because this is the birth of Mithra, the sun god of pagan nation or the cult. So, actually, December 25th will in fact has its origin, Natalis Invictus Solis or the birth of Mithra, the sun god. So, now, we would move on to the Bible, if Jesus was actually born on December 25th or in the winter time. So let us look in the uh, Bible, Luke chapter 2, verse 1 to 8. So we will read this passage. And it came to pass, verse 1, in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenus was governor of Syria, and all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, onto the city of David, which is called 
Bethlehem because it was prophesied that the Messiah or the Christ was to be born on Bethlehem or in the city of David because he was of the house and lineage of David. So verse 5, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered or to give birth the, the son, Jesus Christ. In verse 8, uh, in verse 7, And she brought forth his firstborn born son, which is Jesus Christ, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Verse 8, and there were in the same country shepherds ab abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. So it is clear in the Bible that Jesus was born when uh, the country shepherds was keep on watching on their flock in the field. In Bethlehem, during winter time, their flocks are in a manger to protect them from cold or to protect them from winter season and in this time the bible is clearly says that the country shepherds at this time was keeping and watching their flock in the field so we can say that this time when jesus was born it is a springtime and the springtime in bethlehem was on held on on the month of march april and may so it is not on december so why did they uh, supposedly December 25th as the birth of Christ did really did the Bible say uh, the date the exact date of the birth of Christ no but it is only a season and in fact it is a spring season and not on winter season and not in December so well in fact December 25th has its origin the birth of Metra, not the birth of Christ. The birth of Metra, which is in Latin word, Natalis Invictus Solis, or its derivation, the birthday of Unconquered Son. Not S-O-N, the Son, but the Unconquered Son, S-U-N. So it is a celebration of Son God, not the birth of Christ. And now, aside from Aside from the birthday of Mithra, the unconquered son, who is actually born also on December 25th, according to history. So, in fact, we can, we can see in history that December 25th was also the birthday of Tamos. Aside from Mithra, the birth of Tamos. And Tamos was the son of Nimrod and his mother was Semiramis. Now Semiramis was uh, proclaimed that his son is born on December 25th, and to be to be the to be followed by his father Nimrod, uh, Semiramis called it. Uh, Semiramis declared that. Tamos was a return or rebirth of his father, Nimrod. So if you say that Tamos is a return or rebirth of his father, Nimrod, so it is called reincarnation. So the reincarnation was actually originated at the time also when Semiramis declared that Tamos is a rebirth of his father. And Tamos was born on December 25th. So if you celebrated December 25th, you celebrated the birth of Thomas and not the birth of Christ. And if you celebrated December 25th as the birth of Thomas, then you are also Nimrod's follower. Why? Because Thomas was the son of Nimrod and Semiramis proclaimed it and declared it to be the reincarnation of his father Nimrod. So when you celebrate December 25th as the birth, or they say Christmas Day, actually you celebrated the birth of Thomas, which is the reincarnation of his father Nimrod. And guess what? 
Nimrod was a leader of the Tower of Babel. In Genesis chapter chapter 10, we would summary these verses. In Genesis chapter 10, verse 8 to 9, it says here, And cause begat Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. In verse 10, And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel. And we will talk about the Tower of Babel in Genesis chapter 11, verse 4, of what happened to the Tower of Babel, which Nimrod led on this. And they said, Go to let us build a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven. Genesis 11, verse 4. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. In verse 6. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Go, let us go down. In verse 7, go, let us go down and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. In verse 8, so the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they let off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel. So the conf the antawag dyan, kaning kalibog, confusion or the kaning nagkasagul-sagul na ang mga language, mixing languages so that they will not understand each other. That's why here in our earth, there is Hapon or Japanese, there is Chinese, there is pure American language, there is French, there is Cebuano, there is Ilonggo, no, na Ilonggo, na Tagalog. So, what is the history of that? In this, the Tower of Babel, God confound their language so that they cannot understand of what they say. Because, because of their unbelief. And the leader of it is Nimrod, which is then his son, Thomas, born on December 25th. And Semiramis' his mother proclaimed that this December 25th was the reincarnation of the father of Tamos, which is Nimrod. So if you celebrate December 25th as Christmas Day, you are a follower of Nimrod or the supporters of Nimrod. And in fact, in history, it is being proclaimed that December 25th has been celebrated by the supporters of Nimrod. So if we follow this December 25th, we are also the followers of Nimrod. And the question now, my last question is, why is it that this pagan celebration or pagan origin became its Christianity into its Christmas day? So let us find in the history. This is my last part. So it says in this paragraph, the church in Rome began formally celebrating Christmas on December 25th. During the reign of the emperor, Constantine, as Constantine had made Christianity the effective religion of the empire, some have speculated that choosing this date had the political motive of weakening the established pagan celebration. So it is clearly says that this December 25th, the Christmas day, was its, its origin as a pagan celebration, or as we study the birth of Mithra and the birth of Thamos, which is celebrated by the cult or the pagan tradition. And now, in order this pagan tradition to be part of Christianity movement, Emperor Constantine moved it as a Christmas day to be Christian. The word Christ means Christian, and their pagan celebration defined it as Christmas day in order to be Christianity. So that's the real, real meaning or the, that's the uh, truth about celebration of Christmas so Day. And that's all, be not deceived. We, would, we should be not deceived by this pagan costume and traditions because we clearly see that this 
Christmas Day, December 25th, was not the birth of Christ, but the birth of Mithra, the unconquered son, or Natalis Invictus Solis in Latin word, and the birth of Tamos, the reincarnation of Nimrod. And that's all. Thank you. Yeah, so we just talked about Christmas celebration because today is December 24. Right, so it's um, very known all over the world. So of course, um, Santa Claus will not be absent, right, in the day of Christmas. <laughs> okay, Santa, um, when you hear the name of Santa, maybe when we were not in the truth, it's really good to our ears. Wow, Santa, saint. But if you try to scramble the letters, it becomes Satan, right? And this time that we know the truth already, it's really scary. <laughs> when we hear Santa, it's not really good already. Like we feel bad, right? Okay, so Santa Claus is, um, when you see Santa Claus, it's like he's very heavenly, right? with all the white hairs and uh, um, it's like he's very powerful and he makes children really um, like really feel good in Christmas Day yeah because of what he does right okay but we don't really know the story behind Santa so first is it's actually um, Santa just uh, mimic our Lord Jesus Christ and um, it's proven no, in the Bible so first let's know some of the um, the things that um, we can guarantee that Santa really um, imitates Jesus Christ so first we have Jesus Christ is from the north yeah so it says there in Psalms 48 verse 2 Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion. On the sides of the north, the city of the great king. Okay, so who is from the north? That is the great king. And who is our king? Of course, Jesus Christ is our king. That's why when Jesus comes, yeah, we hail, we glorify our king because he's the king of all kings. And here on earth, Santa is believed to be from the North Pole. So you can see there the pattern. Jesus is from the North, that's from the Mount Zion. And then this time, Santa is from the North as well. So you can see many headlines, stories, and pictures that Santa lives in the North Pole. Yeah, so you can see there some pictures. North Pole, that's very cold with all the snow there, right? And he lives there as what most people believe. So the headline there says, this aerospace organization have started to follow the track of Santa Claus 66 years ago. <laughs> six, six, okay. Another pattern or you can really um, have the clue that this is really not um, a godly um, being, right? So it's really, um, yeah, from Satan himself. So the ne next link proves that Santa is believed to live in North Pole. Yeah, another link. Okay, so here we can see that Santa is trying to copy the residence of Jesus, which is in the North. So it, g it just goes to show, no, that Santa or we say Satan is an imposter. Yeah, so hopefully that the world will really be enlightened with this truth. So he tries to mimic everything about our Lord Jesus Christ. He deceives the whole world by being a god in Xmas. And the world idolizes him because the world loves the darkness rather than light. So it uh, says there in John three nineteen. And this is the condem condemnation that light is come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Yeah, so if we don't want to be one of those wicked ones, then we have to know the truth. 
um, especially when it comes to celebrations. We know already that it's a pagan practice when we celebrate something. And also, um, just a takeaway know that um, since Santa is really known to the children, actually Walt Disney is the one that is um, make this Santa very popular to children. Yeah, and this Walt Disney is believed to be a Freemason. Yeah, so like he has a, like a secret organization or rituals. Yeah, so hopefully um, you will be enlightened with his words. Now let us know about Jesus knows everything. So let us give some Bible witnesses. So let us read Hebrews 4 verse 13. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. So the Bible clearly says that we cannot hide anything from God. He sees it all. We might hide something to our brethren, families, and friends, but remember, God is watching over us. No? Everything is uncovered and exposed before the eyes of God to whom we must give account. So the next verse, Proverbs 15, verse 3, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. It means that God knows when you sit sit down and when you rise up. He sees when you are sleeping. God knows when you are awake. God is familiar with all our ways. Even the hairs of our head are numbered. God knows even before you were conceived. So he knows and sees everything with every secret thing whether it be good or whether it be evil so god shows great and marvelous thing no when we are obedient when will be become an obedient children because he is a loving mighty and powerful god above no, and that is Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, who knows everything and no one can surpass such power. Amen. So, because Satan nowadays, no, many believe that Satan uh, also is believed to know what everyone does. Oh, si Santa, no, Santa. Santa also is believed to know what everyone does. Are you familiar with the song? Santa Claus is coming to town. See? He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. Is that true? He knows if you're being bad or good. So be good for goodness sake. Nah. Why does Santa know you are sleeping? How does he know you are awake? Or how does he know what you're doing? It's because he is trying to copy Jesus Christ, who is the one who knows everything we are doing. Santa is not God. He has no power to know what every person is doing. So, here we see that Santa is trying to copy the power of Jesus of knowing all things and seeing all things. So, a biblical description of God that was stolen by Satan, ngawat na siya, portrayed as Santa, Santa Claus to mock God. No? Santa, a.k.a. Satan, is the father of lies, as what John 8 verse 44 says. Ye are of your father the devil, and the last of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, 
because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. So to all people around the world, hear the word of truth. Put God, God first and worship him in truth. So my topic for this morning is about the comparison between Jesus and Santa. So, so Santa is also very popular, no? Because he comes on one of the most, if not one, but the most caning, happiest, what they say, holidays every year, no? So let's have a com uh, comparison between Jesus and Santa. So we all know that Jesus is present in every place, though he is not physically with us because he is in heaven, but he is present, right? Through his spirit, because God is spirit. And wherever we go, um, wherever we are, and whatever steps we make, he is there. He is there to help us, okay? So he, we call that um, his omnipresent. So guided by this verse in Psalms, I mean Proverbs 15.3. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. So, Santa is going to visit now at your home every Christmas day. So, it's like he visits you every, what, Xmas day, no? It's like he only remembers you during <laughs> December 25th, okay? And they will give you what? Gifts, right? It's what they said. They will give you gifts. So, Let's have more comparison between uh, Jesus and Santa. So, so it says Santa comes once a year. It comes only on Xmas. But Jesus is present. He comes everywhere and every day. And Santa has a big belly. <laughs> right? Santa has a big belly. That's what, that's what we see. But what about Jesus? What can he offer? Jesus can offer his full of love, right? And that love is what makes him die in the cross. He died for our salvation. So as Sister Mizel says, no, like, um, Santa doesn't know our name. He doesn't know your name. But Jesus knows you ever since you were born. He knows your past. He knows what's going to happen in the future. He knows every hair strands of yours, right? So what else? What else Santa can offer? Santa can just say ho, ho, ho only, right? <laughs> but what Jesus can offer? Jesus can offer what? Eternal life. Santa has a reindeer, but Jesus has angels, right? Yeah, so, so how can you say that? Um, so how can you say that Santa can visit your home? Your home, and can he visit also my home at the same time day? It's because he's making you believe that he can be present everywhere at the same time. It's like he's he's copying Jesus, no? That he's copying the power of Jesus that he that is present everywhere. But can he copy Jesus? Definitely not, because Jesus is the King, and he is our he is our only way to our salvation, and the best gift that he can give is what. His promise is what? It's the eternal life. All right. So, okay. So another copycat characteristic of Santa, like that of Jesus, wherein Jesus can make things, make impossible things possible. Um, in Luke 1, verse 37, it says, For with God, nothing shall be impossible. So in the Bible, there are a lot of working miracles and healing miracles that Jesus has done during his life ministry. So to cite a few, um, here are some of Jesus' working miracles that proves his divine power, uh, such as in Matthew 12, verse 22, wherein Jesus healed the possessed with a devil who is also blind and, de and, and dumb. In Mark 2, verse 17, Jesus also healed the woman plagued with blood. In John 9, verses 6 to 7, Jesus also healed the blind man with clay. In Luke 7, verses 1 to 10, Jesus healed a centurion's paralyzed servant. In Mark 5, verses 36 to 43, Jesus raised a dead girl. 
So on the other hand, people are made to believe that Santa can also make impossible possible, but with the use of magic. So sharing um, the world's Santa's magic key poem, it says, Dear Santa, we have no chimney, as you can plainly see. And I was terribly worried that you would pass over me. We hung this very special key right by the door. Then mom told me to jump into bed and not to worry anymore. Your magic will make this key fit to open our door. So you can come in tonight and tiptoe across the floor. So it's very catchy, no? If, if you are a child, you'd really like the poem. But in this poem, we are told that this is in fact a made-believe. Sat uh, Satan is into witchcraft using magic, sorcery, or casting spells to make things work. That's why the world has to make it very catchy. And then, you know, program it into the minds, especially the children, so that they'll be used to hearing it. And for them, it would be very nice and just a normal thing every year. But God is clear in his word. Witchcraft is from the devil, and anyone who practices it will not enter into heaven. It is an abomination to God, as per Revelation 21.8 um, Revelation 21.8 mentions about um, sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And also in Galatians 5, verses 19 to 21, um, idolatry, witchcraft are also mentioned, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So for a true Bible-believing Christian, one understands that, firstly, true miracles are not for entertainment and definitely not for self-gratification. True miracles like that of Jesus' ministry serves a purpose and sends a message from God or about God. Secondly, what Jesus does is not magic. It's a miracle. Jesus' power comes from his own divine nature and not from conjuring other spirits or some arcane occultic practices. So therefore, and we should know and uphold that Jesus' limitless, limitless power cannot be copied nor compared with anyone. So good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. So Santa also copies where children follow and be around with Jesus. So it says in Luke 18:16. But Jesus called them unto him and said, Suffer little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. So as we can see, kids also gather around Santa Claus, and we can see a lot of pictures on how Santa is always followed or surrounded by children. And we can see how he tries to copy Jesus Christ, and how he envies Jesus being surrounded by children. But we can also see pictures of children not being happy, or they are scared or having tantrums around Santa Claus, especially during picture taking. Unlike Jesus, children are always happy around him. So therefore, Santa Claus can never be like Jesus Christ. Santa, Santa is the traditional patron of the world during Xmas, right? And from what we have heard a while ago, he is trying to copy Jesus. Like from what, from from his looks, like the in the Bible, it is recorded. That uh, Satan is, I mean, Christ is, uh, has a hair, white hair, and that is the look of Santa also. He's trying to copy Jesus from his looks to him always, almost everywhere. And now what else did he copy? Santa's famous line is, ho, 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 Mary. Christmas. Now, that is also one of the things that he copied from God because in Zechariah chapter 2, it is recorded that the Lord says, Ho, ho. Let's read. For I saith, Zechariah chapter 2, verses 5 to 6. For I saith, the Lord will be unto her a wall of fire round about and will be the glory in the midst of her. Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north, saith the Lord. For I have spread you abroad as the four winds of the heavens, saith the 
Lord. And of course, Satan would always want to surpass God. So when God says, ho, ho, he says, ho, ho, that's three times so, because he wants to surpass God. And one also of the things that he wants to copy from God is that he wants to like appear like he's compassionate, he's helping the poor, and he's helping the sick. Because a lot of the passages and a lot of passages that we can read in the Bible, it says that God is helpful, helping the, pe uh, hel helping the poor, and healing the sick. One of that verses can be read in John chapter 5, verse 7. The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. But Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up the bed, and walk. So Jesus in this um, verse healed the sick. And Santa was also believed to help the poor and the sick. According to the history, if it's even true, Santa Claus gave away all of his inherited wealth and traveled the countryside helping the poor and sick. But no matter how much he might, he can't exceed Jesus because Jesus lives forever, right? In Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. And of course, Satan, who always wants to copy Jesus, he wanted to appear like he is eternal as well. Diba? He looks the same decades ago. Santa, he looks the same decades ago. And he didn't grow old and he didn't die. Therefore, he is not a man because a human being dies of old age. So how old is Santa? Some sources online says he was born on 280 AD in Patara near Turkey. So he is 1,742 years old this December. 1,742 this December 2022. So he is not really like Jesus because Jesus, he was there even before the world began and he... Satan must be very upset right now. For <laughs> we're throwing a big time bomb against him. But as we keep saying, the loud cry must go forth because this is one of the deceptions that he, of course, make the world believe that this is really true. No, this season, we call it Xmas, the world calls it Christmas. And when we say Christmas, the Lord knows that it's not to blaspheme his name, right? It's just we, we call the term of how the world uh, uses it, but we know it's um, blasphemy. So here to add to the comparison, we've been trying to compare Santa, this very widely, widely admired, idolized kanang icon which is a fairy tale. Yeah, because if, if granting that that person was born on, what year was that, 240? He must be dead by now. Patay na, na, how old na, 1,000. But still, the icon continues, and they still continue to, to idolize this famous uh, so-called fictional, fictional character. But for those who read and study the Bible, um, there is no deception that can penetrate our life uh, as long as we stay in the word and live by the word. So to continue, uh, we will show some pictures. Um, sometimes you see him, this um, Santa, the one with the big belly. I think he eats a lot. No, but I'm not trying to say that if you have a big belly and you are glotton. No, I'm not trying to say that. This is just a picture that um, is being portrayed of uh, something that that is not like health wise it needs uh, some changes right oh, but then the but then if you equate him and his personality with this season you can see how he develops his um, gluttonous practices because you can see the world feasting on this day non-stop like they they would eat from this hour until midnight I think they don't sleep uh, as I can remember, I grew up SDA, but we still celebrated this this um, season before when I, when we were growing up. But I did not remember staying up till midnight, one a.m. We would go to bed, 
But in the world today, they would stay up. Have you? I wait for fireworks on the 12, 12 midnight. Yes, yeah, so, and they eat a lot from, from what hour until, so that's how you see him with his fat belly because uh, that's a symbol of gluttony. They, they would eat nonstop, even at wee hours of the night. So the, uh, let's go back to the dress. Yeah, this is something very interesting. I don't know if you have heard this before. If you look at this, the, dre the costume of, of this man, Santa, look at that. Can you please show it? It's, it's, it's good. Yeah, so he's wearing a red suit with a cape uh, over that suit. And so if, you, if we will show more pictures, um, he has like twins. He dress, dresses like a priest. So let's show a picture of a priest. And how he dresses. Sige, scroll pa. Oh, kana. Oh, imo na siyang if you, s you zoom out. Oh, you would see. You zoom out. Try to zoom out so you can see the cape. It's like the cape of Santa. Like there's a dress and then there's a dress over it. I think dili ma zoom out din sa Chromebook. Ma zoom out diha sa. I resize gani ang picture para ma fit to the so that they can see the cape. And of course, it has to be red. Okay na? Oh, can, oh. So n the next picture, I would put these two popes. Yeah, this one. Oh, oh, I think they're the same, no? Pareho na sila. Si Kinsana? Benedict. That's not the current pope. Dina si Paul? John Paul. I don't know. But so whatever. But you can see the red cape there. You can see that. Right. So next picture. Oh, and Santa ho has a cane too. You can see pictures of him holding a cane. And so if you look at the Pope, he has a cane too. Oh, because they're old. No, there's a meaning. There's a nana shay meaning. Next pa. There's a picture there that the Pope has a cane. Wala. Ah, wala man. But it's in the folder. Nadiha. Pangitaan daw suway say. Nasa folder nga. It says, Pope with cane. So, with a staff. So, Santa has a staff. The Pope has a staff. Can you see the similarity of of what they're trying to do? Oh, oh wala. Lahi. Naaduhan na siya ka picture with a staff. So, but then you also see Santa dress like a, I wear a dress. So, is he a woman or a man? But uh, then pay attention to his name, Santa Claus. Santa is for women. Kung if he's a man, he sh it should be Santo, Santo Claus. So Santa, man. Then you see a picture of a man. So is uh, what what is it called now? Uh, dual sim, du <laughs> double double gender. Uh, then you can see the X, right? When I was filling up the passport form of the children, it says male, female, and then X. And Hannah's like, Mommy, what is X? Can I to male, female, then X? <laughs> oh, they're putting it in the forms now. It's becoming more acceptable these days, as you can see. So then that's also the spirit of this man called Santa, but then the name is Santa. It's, a, it's for women. Next, they have rituals. Um, Sister Percy mentioned about the stockings. Uh, I remember one time my mom uh, told us to hang a piece of stocking by the door, I think, if I can remember right. And then I was like, why? Oh, because Santa would drop some gifts there. And so when we slept that night, when we woke up in the morning, oh, there's something, there was something in the stocking, in the socks. Uh, color white, I remember that. So then I was led to believe that some, someone put something in there. But then I had an idea that it was not Santa, but they said. But you know, it's, it's really sad how the parents teach the children to lie at a very young age just for them to have fun on that day. Yeah, if you, if you pay attention to that, you don't want your children to lie, but then you're t teaching them to lie by making them believe that Santa exists and that he would put some something on the stockings and and things like that 
so they would put these stockings in the chimney, as you can see in the picture. Why? Why would they hang it by the chimney? Because they believe that uh, Santa would pass through the chimney. But then if the fire is going, uh, it's burning, how can, it's not going to be burned. Mapasa oguro no. He would jump there. Na, he's very big. He's not going to fit. So, but then there's a fire that will welcome him. So he's going to be malichun siya dito. Yeah, but it doesn't make sense. So they would put there because they believe that uh, gifts would be placed there. Again, it's a lie. And then if you go to the history, um, there was an old man with three daughters, and they were very poor. And he had no future to give to his daughters like kanang inheritance. So as the story goes, this Saint Nicholas, oh, they call him Saint too. Uh, heard about the old man and decided to help him secretly. So when the family was asleep, um, this supposed to be Saint Nicholas went, went inside their home and placed one bag of gold in each of the washed stockings his three daughters had hung above the fireplace to dry. Also, that was the, that's the story they had, though. The, they put the stockings there by the fireplace to dry it. So then Santa secretly put some a bag of gold in each of the stockings for the daughters while they were sleeping because, you know, to when they wake up, they find that. So then when they woke, woke up the next mor morning, they were very ecstatic to find the gold in each of the uh, hanging, uh, hang stockings. If it, if it is to be true, if it were true, well, how many people would be rich by now, right? By receiving golds. And, uh, so we know it's not true. Next, they have this lug. Are you familiar with this? This is very fa familiar and uh, famous or popular in America or in the Western countries. The Yule, Yule log. Katubang mura siya o piece of wood. Nga dekorisyon na nila. And then they make cakes. Yeah, so you can see that in the picture. And then the origin is also pagan from their solstice festival that they would celebrate every um, January or something. January 22 or something like that. It's a solstice ritual uh, that, that they would use that kind of wood to symbolize the birth of Jesus. While others sa said that it's the, the triumph or the victory over sin. So it's like pagan, they put a Christian meaning and then they, the, the supposed Christians accept it and without researching because... They, they follow tradition more than they read and study the Bible, so they think it's true. Next, these are the rituals. The Christmas caroling. Oh, we did this before. <laughs> home to home, five peso, one peso. Today, bainti. No? <laughs> 100, 500. Oh, dako, magkayo ko anon. Oh, five pesos is like, it does not exist. The five peso coin back then, five peso, we would be very happy. And then even the church, right? The SD church would organize such thing. They would do Christmas caroling, go from home to home and stuff, and they would sing Christmas songs. So the, the history of this is still, it's part of the winter solstice celebration of the pagans back then. They would dance around, they would... Um, uh, what is that? Kanang celebrate, they'd be very happy. And then the lyrics of the songs back then were, were different. They used to use the Latin, and some would not understand, so they changed it to the English. And so now you would see even the Orthodox Church and the Catholic Church most especially uphold this um, type of what is this ritual? So Christmas caroling is a ritual part of this, as a, as a part of this pagan celebration. And of course, there are hymns that um, reflect the, the birth of Jesus. Like there are old hymns like the Sil I think the Silent Night, that's a very old hymn. Oh, Holy Night. No, no, no. But the problem is they only sing that in December. Week, huh? A joy to the world, the Lord is come. Yes, that's a, it's a, a song, the, the song of, about the birth of Jesus should not be sung only in December. Yeah, we can sing it every day that Jesus Christ was born on earth. Of course, we do not um, uh, sing that on the, just on December, 
But some uh, would become fanatical, like if you sing that, you know, where are you singing a Christmas song? Well, that's the birth of Jesus, but then the, the world just used it to sing only on December 25. For, I mean, for the season, which is not uh, correct. If they want to sing the birth, they should sing it every day. Now let's go to the famous Christmas tree, Xmas tree. Uh, do you know the history? I think we talked about that before. It's to revive the spirit of uh, Tamos, Nimrod. So by putting gifts there and the, at the base of the tree, it's, it's trying to revive the spirit of Nimrod. So on every year on his birthday, the Semiramis believed that Nimrod would vis visit the tree. So placing gifts underneath it for his return. Oh. Pero, um, it's pagan. It's pagan. We know that it's pagan. And uh, there is a claim. Somebody told me. Actually, he messaged the church uh, page in box. He said that um, the LNG White celebrated Christmas. Therefore, it's okay. No. But the qu first question is this. Where in the Bible does it say that we are to celebrate the death of, uh, the birth of Jesus Christ? But in reality, after this, uh, I mean, by s from this study, we proved that it's not the birth. It's a destruction of the... <laughs> so it's the death of Jesus. It's the death. It's not the birth. The people in this world is deceived by this Satan, as Revelation 12, 9 says. Let's read Jeremiah 10. 3, 4, 5. This is really true. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workman with the, the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it moved not. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. Neither also is it in them to do good so that tree is dead. No? It can't do anything. They deck it with silver and gold. It's true. It's really true. How long ago was this written? Long time ago, but then it still exists. Th this pagan practice exists today. Now, a few more things. I talk about the eating and drinking. Oh, feasting, gluttony, sleepless nights, dilip mga tulog, destroying the loss of health. And then, as a result of this practice, the hospitals are full in December. The ER is busy because of the oh, class, you know. They said it's a firecracker. Oh, they put it in a white, sana white, white mode. Sana naiko white code. The hospitals are put on white code of, for this season. Uh, they said it's the firecrackers, oh, but it's actually not just the firecrackers, but because of the Kanang heart attacks, uh, high blood pressures, because of the bad habits being uh, intensely magnified during this season. So hospitals are full. And then do you know the reason for firecrackers? Oh, what is it? What's the reason? It's to ward off evil from your life, to, to get rid of bad luck. No, because the world believes in luck, right? But we believe in blessings to cast off evil. So they would explode na loud noises ana, because they believe that it would drive away the evils. But actually, it invites the evils, right? Because they love noise. So that's still a part of the ritual. And then the shopping spree during this time. Oh, I think the malls are selling a lot of... <laughs> oh, so I, I tried to check online this Walmart, if you are familiar with Walmart. That's um, one of the largest, uh, world's largest retailer. They would earn $150 billion during this season. Even for the straight two years with the COVID, they still earn $150 billion of revenue. Uh, that's, that's a lot of money. Billion, you're talking about billions. Because this is the time of the year where everyone is very kanang inspired to buy something. Buy, 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 buy. And then one time I remembered when we were still doing this in the SD church, we had this exchanging gifts. And then they, 
they put a limit like like okay 10 peso 20 and then of course you make your own gift and then you would put it there to be exchanged and then when you receive it and then uh, someone in my family had a, he di she didn't like what she got so she cried so we were very <laughs> uh, disturbed on our way home because <laughs> after the party after the exchanging gifts someone was crying I didn't like this ah she, she was crying so instead of making that fun it turned out to be a disaster so again it affects the one the celebr the the, the ones who tried to celebrate. So if you see that Revelation 18, the merchants of the earth wax great, correct? Because of the abundance of her delicacies and the people are joining and buying, buying, buying. And then you are pressured to buy because w you feel bad if you don't buy something. No? And then if you're a ninong or you're a ninang, you're in trouble. <laughs> Why? How many ninongs and ninangs? Imong amung gikwanan ba? Oh, you'd buy for this. If you will miss this person, they'll be upset, they'll be offended. Ana ana, and then it becomes a kind of trouble. And then the pressure is there, and you you lend money, you loan money just to celebrate this day. But for us, for us who study the word, who study and read the Bible, it's freedom. Can you feel the freedom? Yes. No sleepless nights. No firecrackers. No buying of gifts. No, we give gifts to our loved ones, to, to everyone, anytime. We can do it anytime. There is no pressure from God. No, so we should be thankful. And um, because we are running out of time, the, this Labor's Day, we will just save it for the next study. Do you have any um, addition? We talk about the white hair. Okay na to? O nasabda na to? Bisaya o na to? Kasabot naman siguro mo, no? Ang sanina ba? Katumpuwa? Hmm. Najud siya, no? Najud siya ka ng... Ah, oh, the spirit of Antichrist. Oh, the Pope is trying to imitate Vicar of Christ. And then si Santa po, kapi-kapi po siya, kay pafil po niya nga, si Christ po siya. So this is a very big lie. And, and for those, our friends who are watching online, and you hear this message, and this is the first time you hear this message, and if you're offended, um, this is the word of God, you're not offended of us. Um, if you are, then so be it. We cannot keep quiet because this is part of God's um, command to warn you because you are just deceived and you did not know the truth. In a time of ignorance, God will just excuse you. But now that you know, you have a duty to um, either follow or reject. And if you reject, you will be accountable to close the worship let's all pray our father heart in heaven the most powerful with jesus christ and with the holy spirit all three highest powers in heaven we thank you so much for this blessed sabbath day and we pray that many eyes and ears um, will be opened because of the loud voice and the loud cry of this message to come out of babylon to come out of the bondage of Egypt, of this modern time deceptions. And we pray that you will continue to bless us as we spend the rest of the Sabbath day to commune with you, to spend time with family, with nature. And please speak to us and give us more guidance so we can change our lives, conform to your image, because we um, accepted the fact that we are wretched and we are sinful, that we need a savior, that we need to overcome this world. And thank you for promising us that you will give us the power to overcome this world, this evil, this Satan, and the sin. We ask that you will continue to uh, guide us in the way we should go. And to those in our prayer list, that you will bless each and every situation that's in there and according to your perfect will. And to all the prayers that we uh, say unto you in our private prayers, including the forgiveness of the sins, that we have confessed in our private prayers. Thank you for everything that you have done to us and for your son, Jesus Christ. This we pray with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.